Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the open live session as part of the Neurographica Basics course. Today, we will be discussing the eight steps of the algorithm. Welcome. I'm going to introduce you to the changes that occurred within the eight steps. And I'm inviting you to take this journey within finding out what is so much fun, so much interest, so much trending within the method that we call the neurographic method. And um, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Alana Shalom. I am a certified neurographic instructor and coach. I have been practicing neurographic since 2017, and I have been a certified instructor and coach since 2018. And um, I have done lots and lots of trainings. I actually conduct the basics course in neurographic every two months, followed by the specialist course in neurographic every two months. So I'm inviting you to join me for this amazing discovery that will bring great transformation and great awareness to your life called the Neurographica Method. Today we will look into something called the eight steps of the algorithm. The eight steps of the algorithm is actually the sequence, the rules of how to draw Neurographica. Usually this was something that I did in the closed section of the Neurographica Basics course, but uh, for the past time, there has been so many changes, so many, additions to the course, the course is expanding. So I decided to bring more information, make it available to the public wide so more people can take advantage of this amazing method and start bringing lots of positive changes within their life, okay? So I'm gonna go back to sharing my presentation. And also I'm gonna change my camera. We're gonna do some looking at the presentation and also I'm gonna draw something for you. I'm gonna actually show you as we go through the eight steps, um, if necessary or as necessary, I will change my camera and show you the necessary results, okay? Okay, let's do this. Welcome to the School of Neurographica by Lana Shalom. We cre we're creativity plus coaching equal harmony and results. I would like to bring creative approach to life. And that's one of the premises by the Neurographic Method. Uh, yesterday, we had a great session on the tense principles of Neurographica. You can now watch that video on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is called Lana Shalom. And um, a few hours ago, I actually posted a, an article about the 10 principles. So now welcome to the eight steps of the algorithm, okay? The eight step of the algorithm is known as the BAITH algorithm, the base sequence of steps that we, we perform when we draw the neurographic method. It is also known as the Piskarev's algorithm. Piskarev's algorithm is named after the author of the neurographic method, Pavel Piskarev. Pavel is a PhD, psychology. Pavel has a PhD in psychology. Pavel is a certified coach. Pavel is a, an architect, a Reiki master. Everything Pavel knows and, know, and knew before and all of his knowledge, all of his practices, extensive practices in a lot of areas and a lot of integrative um, transformational practices he collected and he created this amazing method that we call the Neurographica method. And the premise of Neurographica is that it will bring transformation, harmony, and um, realistic results to your life. But it's important to note that all steps must be followed for the Neurographica drawing. No steps should be omitted, okay? That's the important part. If, you've, if you do miss a step, that's what we call the difference between neurographica and neuro art. Okay? In neuro art, we just focus on the art part. 
And in art, and I have a lot of artists who come to me and they like, oh, but that's too many rules. I don't like to follow rules in my art. And I tell them, yeah, that's understandable and I agree with you. But neurographic is a coaching method and we do need to follow rules. And the idea is that the way I, I present it, that's why I like to call it the creative approach. Um, before doing neurographic, I was actually a special education teacher for 20 years, an early childhood educator also, bilingual educator. And my company was called Creative Approach to Learning. And that's how I like to do. I explain to the artists, I always explain to the artist students that you're absolutely right. When it comes to art, there are no rules except what you set for yourself. But over here, this is a patented method. And it's important at this point to learn the rules, to understand what is required to fully master the method. And then you can take your learning, right? A lot of people, most people who come to me, they take the basics course and then they become specialists. They go for the specialist certification. And then I said, that's exactly what you can do. As a specialist, you can take your um, knowledge about neurographic and start using it within your art, okay? Create neuro art. And yes, in neuro art, there are no rules. You don't have to follow the eight steps. But if you're looking to bring transformational results, if you're looking for coaching results, meaning in coaching, we set a goal and we'll figure out a way to get to that goal. We figure out a way to reach the goal, to bring the goal that we're seeking into our reality. And that's why we have the eight steps. If that's what you're looking for, let's look at the eight steps, okay? The first step is always setting the topic. Sometimes we'll call it topic 1.0 because if you notice to, if you go all the way to the end, I'm gonna fast forward you to number eight, it's topic 2.0. But for the first, we don't know that it's 1.0. So I like to call it just the topic, okay? Setting your goal. What is your goal? Sometimes it's important when you set your goal, sometimes it's important to focus on the general area of your goal. If you're looking for a goal within health, if you're looking for a goal within money, if you're looking for a goal within personal career, personal success, relationship maybe, and so on and so forth. Set the topic, find the theme, find the general area of where you would like to achieve results. Once you do that, we go to the second step. The second step is called, we used to call it the composition. This is one of the changes that have occurred within the eight steps. It used to be called composition. Now it is transformed into neuro composition, not just any composition, but a composition for specifically the neurographic or drawing. This is where we start to draw. This is where we start to bring, to put something on the paper. Sometimes it's shapes, sometimes it's lines. And in the algorithm called the ARL, the algorithm for removing limitations, when we try to remove limitations within our mind, within our, ourselves, some resistance, that we put up with our goal, with a desired goal. This is something we learn actually at the very base, at the basics in neurographic, of course. That's what we start to learn. How do we remove limitations? This basics course, I'm starting something amazing with you. We're gonna add, there's a new algorithm added to the course and that's what will be a part. A new addition to the course will be the algorithm called the algorithm for removing outer limitations, okay? Yeah, the algorithm for removing restrictions. Restrictions are limitations that are imposed by others, by, by other entities or by other people. And that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you what's happening with that algorithm. That's a new algorithm that has been added to the basics course. Step three is conjoining. And here again, the new addition to the eight steps. Conjoining consists of two parts. 3.1 is the rounding. 
and 3.2 is neurographing. The rounding is specifically a unique feature that only exists in the neurographic method. It's an extremely unique, extremely harmonizing and transformational technique that allows one to become in sync, to become integrated with a new entity that comes into one's life. We perform that technique visually on our, in our drawing. Graphically is what we refer to it. And then we add something called the neurographing. Okay. I'm going to actually turn my camera and show it to you. I want you to, to see the actual, um, the actual technique, so to say. When I change my camera and show you the rounding, what happens to the drawing when we add the rounding and the neurographing? It's very important to know both of those techniques. Right? Nope. There you go. Let me stop the presentation sharing. You can see my um, you can see my notebook. This is actually the pyramid of consciousness. I have presented it this morning. I did a session in Russian as part of the basics course, as part of the bilingual neurographica course, where I present neurographica basics course in English and in Russian. Okay. We had a Russian speaking session today. And now we want to show you, I'm going to take a fine marker, not an ultra fine, okay? So imagine if you had, if you added lines, right, as part of your composition, right, in step two, right? Okay, sometimes when people add lines, they add lines like this. Right, you notice the difference, right? This are neural lines. This is a line, and that's the difference. A lot of times, people sometimes when they draw fast, they add a line, not a wavy line like here, but rather a very um, as if you took the wavy line and you kind of started pulling it, right? And it became more straight, not so many waves. Okay. In this case, we notice that we're missing the neural line quality in the line. And that's when, as necessary, we add the point that's called neurographing the line, okay? So again, in point three, in step three, the first thing we do is, well, we always go over the line just for you to understand, right? We always go over the line. Like this. Okay, notice what I did. I integrated, conjoined the two lines over here. You see? I added this technique of conjoining the line by rounding out the edges. It's called the rounding. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, conjoining is the official word, but the lay term we use often is the rounding. Voilà. There you go. Mm -hmm. Notice what's happening, okay? So the first thing I'm doing is rounding the intersections. Now I'm gonna pay attention to the lines that were created. And um, at this point, I already told you that two of the lines weren't as neural line as it's supposed to be, as it ought to be, according to the neural line um, qualities. The neural line qualities is it's supposed to have wavelengths, okay? This is an important part, okay? This line is more straight. When something like this occurs, I suggest adding something that we call neurographing of the line, okay? What's going to happen? I'm going to go over the line and look at this. Add a neural line to it. Like go over it with waves. 
draw the neural line over the straight line that's present in the picture. Look, look what happens. Okay, and then I go over it again. And there are two ways to deal with it, two ways to round out. Again, every time we, because the rule is every time we add any element, a line or a shape to the drawing, we must go back and make sure all the intersections are rounded. Notice how I'm rounding when I add the neural line. I'm rounding by this, you see, by filling it up, okay? Let's add more wavelength into here. Voila. See what's happening? I'm either going to round out the edges within, or I'm just going to fully fill it in. And thus, when you look at the line, you're going to see now what's going to happen. The effect is going to be completely different than the line that was drawn before. Okay. This is an important part to pay attention. This is a new. I don't know if it's an addition because we did this before. I guess it's being highlighted more because more people are drawing more of a straight line. So in order, if you feel your line is not wavy enough, you can neurograph the line, okay? You can add an extra neural line on top. And look what happened. Your line actually has more waves. You see, it has wavelengths within it. And that's an important uh, part that we would like to um, highlight to bring out, okay? When you draw the neurographic drawing. When you draw any neurographic drawing, okay? Let's go back to our presentation. Okay. So we just finished explaining step three, conjoining when we first do the rounding. And we also make sure that we add necessary neurographic. We add the necessary neuroline quality to our drawing, okay? The step four is integration. It's the same as before. It's also broken into two parts, right? Broken into two parts. Step one, 4.1 is F and B, I like to call it short wise. It stands for the figure in the background. This is the point where we start integrating or dissolving the figure into the background, we do this by adding lots and lots of neural lines to the background, okay? Lots of neural lines to dissolve, to add more of a, an environment, more of a background. The background is an allegory, is a reference to the social environment. The picture, the figure, whatever we see before we add the lines is an allegory of the person of the subject itself. And the object in any of neurographic drawing is a subject itself. It's the author. It's the artist that does the drawing. We always draw about ourselves. We always draw about our topic. Remember we said the topic in the first step? That's why it's always about us. It's always about who am I? What am I? What am I doing here? What is it that I would like in this life? Okay, focusing on me, myself, and I. But it's important to notice, as much as we focus on me, myself, and I, we accept the important part that we need. We don't live by ourselves. We are not, you know, we don't live in a seclusion. We are a part of a social environment. So we reflect that social environment within our drawing, okay? We add the neural lines, okay? We add the graphic necessity, the graphic representation of the fact that we do not live alone, we live with others. And okay. Step 4.2 is archetyping. It's adding color. This is where we add color and we can use the color to create big figures, to connect to the energy, 
that big figures possess. Big figures refers to archetypes, egregors, and um, kind of significant um, values, maybe. Significant um, figures, entities within our life, okay? More I will be explaining about each of the steps when next week I'm going to do um, a session, an open session on integrating the pyramid of consciousness with eight steps of the algorithm. So welcome to join that as well. Step five are the field lines. The field lines we also refer to as the supporting lines. They bring support to our drawing. Step six is called the fixing shape, right? We also call it, the simpler way to explain it would be the word affixing, but I like to refer to it as a fixing shape. It has to be a shape. I want to specify that it must be a shape, okay? It can be um, a shape that doesn't look like anything, right? Some kind of irregular shape. Um, I will be talking more tomorrow, probably. I'm going to do a live where I'll be talking about shapes in Neurographica. I will be telling you more about the shapes, about the Neuroline. But for now, to, the important thing to remember in the basics course, we focus on the shape of a circle. The circle is an archetypal shape of harmony, care, comfort, love, motherly, um, feminine energy, the energy of completion. And that's what we would like to bring at the basics level. It's self-coaching. It's generating self-love. It's healing your inner child. And that's what happens. That's why we bring circles at the basics level, because circles bring exactly that energy. Okay. So when we bring the fixing shape, it must be either a circle or an oval or something that looks like one of those. Okay. Step seven is stylization. This is interesting. This is a new step. It was added last year. A lot of people have been asking me about it, right? So stylization is aesthetically completing the drawing. The official explanation of stylization is to complete the drawing, is to the completion, is to the closure, right? What we refer to as a closure, right? And then it, it's brought out that it must be aesthetically done. Now, it's important to understand, again, I will show it to you more next week when I will do the pyramid of consciousness and the eight steps of the algorithm. But the important understanding here is that stylization is this way, the way to um, kind of not just complete the drawing, but it's also a way to go back first before you complete the drawing, add the necessary, you know, add the necessary colors, do the drawing, complete the drawing according aesthetically, go through the previous steps and make sure all of them have been reflected within your drawing. Make sure you have enough neural lines. Make sure you added color correctly. Four or more shapes are colored one color. You cannot combine. Color must be done in a way where you combine four or more shapes, thus creating large, big figures, okay? Make sure all the intersections have been rounded. Make sure if there is a straight line in your drawing, you neurograph it. A lot of time that happens when we draw the catharsis during the ARL. The catharsis is a free throw, right? When the, somebody throw the drawing, quick drawing, um, that must be neurographed because the catharsis is usually straight line. So you must neurograph it in order to add the energy of the circle. We know that the neuro line contained the energy of the circle. Again, harmony, care, comfort. That's what we need to have, okay? And in general, just check everything else. Do you have field lines? Do you have, there must be at least three field lines. Depending on the age, the size of the paper, uh, even the smallest side, I add. Look, I sometimes draw. I think you can see this. Look. I'm going to show you something. I have. I often draw on the little pieces of paper. I have pieces of paper over here. I just bought memo pads. Pads like this that I like to use for drawing, okay, post its. So it's important to understand that 
it doesn't matter. Look, this is a tiny small drawing. And even here, I have at least two field lines, okay? Look, field lines. The smaller size of paper, look again here, I added three. You add two or three. Don't add less than, than two. You can add A3 size, which is like, this is like A4, a little more than A4. A3 is big like this, right? You can see my hands like this, yeah. Like the size of the screen, right? Um, that's A3, and over there I can add even four field lines if necessary. The important part to remember, the field lines must be spread out throughout your picture. A lot of times when I do the supervision of, of my students, they would put field lines like in one section of the paper and then the rest of the paper is clear. And I always explain, make sure your field lines are spread out. One, two, three, or if they're horizontal, one, two, three, okay? If they're diagonal, one, two, three, one in the center, two on the sides. Strategically, look at your paper and spread out your field lines strategically throughout your drawing, okay? Let's go back. Check. Again, check if you have an affixing shape. Is your affixing shape thick enough? Is your field line, are your field line thick enough? Are they rounded? Because every time we add a new element, remember the lines or the shape, we must go through all the interaction sections that was created and round them out, okay? And that's a part of stylization. <coughs> stylization is completing the drawing. And then we'll look at step eight, where it says topic 2.0. Reevaluating the original topic. Topic 2.0 is about looking and saying, okay, I finished my drawing. What has occurred? What are the changes? What are the transformations that have occurred within my original goal, within my mind, right? And remember, don't underestimate the important technique we call the reflection process. Um, if you're interested, let me know and I will um, create a separate video where I talk about the reflection process. This is an important process that we complement every single drawing we cannot when I again when I do the supervision of my students work I always look what are the changes what happened give me the description what was your reflection process okay so at the end after all the transformation that occurred with us we are reevaluating the original topic and figuring out how has it changed? Has it changed? Did we bring out, did we come up with new insight, new understanding of what this goal originally means to me? Okay. And that's how it works. Okay. And that's it. And that's how we end the neurographical drawing. Notice we always start with a topic and we always end with a topic. Because remember, the object of any neurographic drawing is the subject, him or her, or they, some selves, okay? The artist, the author is the subject of the drawing. We need to focus, we need to understand, we draw for whatever goal we are seeking, okay? So welcome to join us as we are starting the neurographic course Next Wednesday, October 11, we will start at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can join us for the live session. Zoom link will be provided. Once you register, you can, some people are not available, and that's fine because then you can watch it in recording. One way or another, you're always welcome to join us. Okay. October 11, there will be two live sessions October 11 and October 18. Then we will follow it with a specialist course where you can become a specialist and start using neurographic as a method, as a full-fledged method. You can start having paying clients. You can start giving workshops and classes. And that will take place on October 26th and I believe November 1st, also two Wednesdays, okay? And the specialist course, this cohort, I will also be introducing a new algorithm. We have a new algorithm joining the specialist course. So welcome to join us. Okay. And um, this is it. I'm going to change my camera so I can say goodbye to you.
here I am. Thank you for joining me for this informative session where I got to tell you about the eight steps, the important steps we take, the sequence of how to join Neurographic. I will come live tomorrow. Um, there is no set time for now, but I'm trying to make it um, next week. Maybe my set time will be 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm not sure what's better, morning time or evening time to do live sessions. Um, but one way or another, I will be doing it. I will tell you more about the shapes in Neurographica, and I will tell you more about the reflection process, an important part, important technique that we use to support the Neurographica method, this, the Neurographica drawing every single time. Thank you for joining me, and um, I'm wishing you a wonderful day, night, or maybe for some of you, morning ahead. Goodbye. If you would like to register for the basics course, welcome to email me or message me.